Hello, and welcome to Candidates Up Front. This is a public interest election program of Berks Community Television and the League of Women Voters of Berks County. Our May 16th primary election is coming up. Democrats and Republicans will vote for judges, school directors, and county, township, borough, and city officials. The deadline to register to vote is May 1st. To check your voting status, go to votepa.gov. That's vote.pa.gov. You can register, change your party, locate your polling place, or apply for an absentee or mail-in ballot. The deadline to register is May 1st. The deadline to apply for a mail-in ballot is May 9th. The League is interviewing those candidates who wanted to be interviewed in contested races. For each race, the candidates will get the same basic questions and the same amount of time to answer them. Hello, I'm Kay Herring. I'm a member of the League of Women Voters of Berks County. Five candidates are competing for a chance to be magisterial district judge in Berks District 23302. That area includes Earl Douglas Colebrookdale, Washington, and Hereford Townships, and the boroughs of Boyertown, Bechtelsville, and Bally. Four candidates are cross-filed, which means that they are on the ballot for both the Democrat and Republican Party. They are Rick Drumheller, Charlie Madonna, Andrew Mathias, and Robert Hawes. David Schott will be the only um, person listed on the Republican ballot. Voters in each party will select one to be on the foul ballot. So the mag magisterial district judge handles traffic violations, landlord-tenant matters, and civil actions where the amount claimed is less than $12,000. The judge presides at arraignments, sets bail, issues warrants, and performs duties of a similar nature. The term is for six years, and the 2023 salary is $106,245. Please note that the opinions expressed in this interview are those of the candidate and are not the opinions of the League of Women Voters or of Burke's Community Television. This interview is with Rick Drumheller. Um, welcome. Thank you. And if you could start out by tell our viewers a little bit about yourself and why are you running. My name's Rick Drumheller. I'm a retired police officer from Pottstown. I also retired from Coworkdale. Both I, I served as chief on both of them. I'm married for an August the 13th. It'll be 40 years. I have two sons and three grandchildren. Why am I running? I love my community and I want to serve it. Great. And so then a little bit more, uh, if you could tell us about your education and uh, the background um, that you bring to this position. I started out as a Boyertown graduate. And from Boyertown, I actually went to Reading Community College and I got an associate's degree in, in criminal law. Uh, I then went to work and uh, my wife went to nursing school. Actually, she graduated from St. Joe's Nursing here in Reading. And then from there, I uh, got hired in Pottstown and I worked my way through every, just about every position. The only thing I didn't work was canine, but I was a, a patrolman, sergeant, captain, and then chief. Okay, great. Um, what are the personal qualities that you have um, that, that you feel will help you be an effective district judge? I have a few, uh, but my, my most important one, I believe, is my ability to listen to people talk and understand what they're trying to say. Further, I think integrity is important. If I give you my word, it's my word, and I don't change. So those are two of the types of, of personality is that I, I bring to the table. Plus, with all the knowledge that I've had in police department and serving in so many areas, I bring a unique perspective to the crimes and the, and the case. I've spent a lot of time in, in court and I've been through just about every phase all the way up and including appeals. So I, I bring a unique mindset 
to the bench. And if you could tell us a little bit about the area, the geographic area and the community that this district serves. This district is on the east end of Berks County and it's bordering a lot of places. It borders Montgomery County. It starts in Hereford Township and then it's Washington Township, it's Cobrookdale Township, Douglas Township, Earl Township. And then it, there's three boroughs, Bechtelsville, Bally, and Boyertown. Okay. And are you involved in volunteer or community work? Um, and if so, if you could please tell us a little bit about that. I've always been very active in our community. I've enjoyed spending time in it. And I've, I live in the Boyertown community, but I also worked in Pottstown. So I got a chance to spend a lot of time in Pottstown. I served for 25 years on the Pottstown Area Police Athletic League. I actually worked my way up to being the president there. And during that time, we had an opportunity to start a baseball program. And we had, we had a wonderful program, and we got a lot of young men in in, in the program who went on to further education, which is the goal of the program. When I retired from the Police Athletic League, uh, they ended up naming the field after me, which I thought was kind of <laughs> unique, but every once in a while I like to just drive past the sign. It makes you feel good that you did it. You did the right things for the right reason, and, uh, and that's kind of what I am about. Okay, thank you, Rick. As a district judge, you will deal with matters of civil law and criminal law. And if you could please explain um, to us in the audience um, the difference um, between those um, and give us some examples of each. Well, civil law deals more with a, a the, the criteria for civil law is preponderance of the evidence, which means at 50.1% that tilts the scale in the favor of the person that's there. That's the lowest standard that's applied in generally most courts. Uh, that's applied to civil cases because of generally there's an economic uh, background. In other words, a landlord is suing a tenant or someone is suing for, for monetary gains. Criminal is a little bit different because in criminal, eventually in a courtroom, it, it, the, the standard is beyond a reasonable doubt. But it, at the district justice level, it's prima facie. In other words, they've, the, the police have presented enough evidence to make a reasonable person believe that a crime occurred. And that's the standard for the district justice level. Okay. And um, your role, of course, um, if um, you are elected as district judge, you would be involved in handling both types of cases. Um, can you explain what the district judge's role is in handling a criminal issue? Well, the magisterial district court is the beginning of the criminal process. So as, as, I, as, as that case comes in, we would, we would issue arrest warrants, we would um, review affidavit of probable causes, we would review search warrant, uh, uh, search warrant procedures, and it's just the very beginning step of the criminal process. If a prima facie case is held, then that case is then moved to uh, Berk, uh, Redding, Redding Court, so. And can you give us maybe a, just a simple example of what criminal issue you know would be, or maybe a, a couple of them, so we have a better understanding okay. of how, yeah, the criminal. Um, well, First off, you've got to remember that when you're talking about criminal, there's, there's, there's a multitude of it. Summary offenses are handled at the local level. So in other words, a criminal mischief, um, you know, uh, throwing eggs at a house. Uh, a criminal mischief is disorderly conduct. Um, those are handled at the district justice level. Now, bear in mind, you always have a right to an appeal, but they're handled by the district justice. A more of a, a uh, um, case that's moved to court would be like a DUI or it would be a robbery or, or a serious crime like that would, would be heard at the district justice level and then either dismissed or moved to court. And then let's um, talk again about 
um, civil issues, um, what would the role be for a district judge in handling a civil issue? And maybe give us some examples of that. I think that's something people are not as familiar with, what, how civil is defined. Uh, civil issues can be uh, an abundance of things like landlord-tenant complaints. It could also be non-payment of fines. And quite frankly, civil issues can be brought by codes departments. So uh, every one of these municipalities has a code agent, and they are, their, their designation is to be able to handle um, property issues like high grass or that type of thing. Um, but again, at this level, uh, the judge is going to make the decision. And of course, every decision that this judge can make is subject to an appeal and they can appeal. But if you make the right decision, then the chances are for appeal are, are slimmer. Okay. The district judge uh, decides whether there is sufficient evidence for a criminal case to go to trial. What will you consider when making this decision, looking at um, the evidence in a criminal case? When you look at the criminal case, um, when you understand that you're going to go into a case, you're going to know the docket before it comes to you. So for me personally, I would then review the statutes that they chose to use. So they will select what, what statute that they're going to charge somebody with. Secondly, then each statute has a specific requirement that's needed. That requirement must be met in what they call the four corner documents of their affidavit of probable cause. If it's not in there, it, it's not, you don't hold the case, you throw it out. Thank you. And another um, item that district justices do in their role is they set bail. And what criteria will you use to decide whether bail is needed? And then what criteria will you use to determine how high the bail should be? Well, the most important thing you got to remember is bail is not a form of punishment. Bail is nothing more than a guarantee that the person or people will show up at their next phases of the criminal process. So with that, the judge has to weigh those issues on simple things like where they live, how are they invested in the community, what type of crime they were charged with, and what is their flight risk? Are they going to leave the area? Are they homeless? Do they, do they, do they, are they embedded in the community? Those are types of things that you have to look over, and then you make, you make your bail decision based on that. And as far as how high the bail should be or those amounts of bail, I mean, are there um, specific criteria you look at or how do you determine that? <clears throat> well, there is a standard of, of bail range, and uh, the standard uh, it depends on what the crime is. And if that's, and, and you try to stay within the standard, when you start having uh, anomalies outside of the standard, that's the reason to raise the bail. Uh, try to remember that regardless of what bail the district judge sets, they have the right to a bail hearing and they can have it decreased or, believe it or not, the police have the right to ask for a bail hearing for an increase. Okay. Are there community problems the district judge can help to alleviate? Yeah, there are a lot of community problems that can help them. One of the most important thing is, is just to be involved in the community. I've spent my entire life in the Boyertown community. I know parents, grandparents, and children. When you understand the makeup of the community, it's easier for you to get things accomplished. Uh, if you, I used the example earlier about throwing eggs. Uh, that was just something that they seemed to do around the Halloweens. <laughs> but what's to be learned out of just having the fine paid? You know, so if there's community service involved, I know the Boyertown has a um, youth aid panel. Having children go to the youth aid panel is an important thing. They can at least learn to respect their community and respect themselves and other people's property. As a member of the judiciary, what can you do both on and off the bench to ensure that all Pennsylvanians have access to the courts? In my, in my past career as chief, you will find that I've never hid from anybody. 
I will make arrangements for anybody that wants to meet with me. And even as magisterial judge, I frequently go out to, uh, I like to eat out to be honest with you, so I go to a lot of restaurants around and people will come up and talk to me about issues and I, I don't, I, I cannot give them a, an opinion I can give them an opinion on the law. I cannot tell them whether or not they would be successful in prosecution. That's not the job of a magisterial district judge because he would have to hear that case. But I make myself available. I try to be involved in the community. I go, I, I just recently went to a senior center for a meet and greet and we just sat down and we talked about some of the old things that used to happen in town. and. And it was just a it was just a wonderful time, and it and that type of behavior enriches your life when you get an opportunity to sit and talk to people. Okay. So if um, we have a few minutes left here, I'm going to let you make a closing statement. But I have uh, one or two more questions. Uh, what is the importance of this position, and why should it matter to the average voter? I mean, why do voters need to understand what the position is? and um, come out and vote um, for uh, the person in this position? When you recognize that this is the entry level to the criminal justice system, it's important that people understand it. As a general rule, most people do not understand what the magisterial district justice does. Why? Because they haven't had any contact with it. So for that reason, I, I encourage you to become involved I have a video on my website. If you don't understand what a judge does, feel free to go ahead and look at it. But understand that if I serve, that I serve, I will serve with integrity, I will serve with dedication, and I will be what they call a community servant, which is a person that's going to sit there and listen to people, regardless of whether they're right or wrong, at least give them the opportunity to explain why they feel they were done incorrectly. Thank you, Rick. And um, that is, of course, one of the major goals of the League of Women Voters. It, we educate voters so that they are informed when they go to the polls. Um, at this point in time, you can um, take a minute, and if you have a closing statement, is there anything else you want the voters to hear um, or want to talk about this position that you're running for magisterial um, district judge in Berks County? Well, thank you. I've given this position a lot of thought. Why have I managed to come back from retirement to go out into my community and continue this? It's really simple. I'm dedicated to my community and I want to continue to serve. I enjoy being out there. I love what I do. And I think I can bring a perspective that most people will understand. So on May the 16th, when you go to vote, I obviously ask you to vote for me. Thank you. Rick Drumheller uh, for sharing your views with us. Viewers, if you would please remember, there are many candidates for magisterial district judge in the district 230302 on the Democrat and Republican ballots. They include Rick Drumheller, who you just heard from, Charlie Madonna, Andrew Mathias, Robert Hawes, and David Schott. You vote for one. And I do want to remind people that for more information on all candidates that are running in your specific area, you can go onto the League's um, online voter guide. It is vote411.org. That's vote411.org. All you have to do once you get to that website is type in your address, and it will show you everyone in your particular location that is on the ballot with information that candidates have provided to us. Vote411 is safe. It does not store your address. Please be prepared when you go to vote, and remember, you can look it up at vote vote411.org. Candidates um, are running for township and borough offices are putting information on vo vote411.org. Candidates running for the 18 school districts in Berks County are also putting their information on this website. So be prepared. Use vote411.org.
411.org. Thank you for watching Candidates Up Front. You will find the Candidates Up Front interviews on BCTV and on its website and its YouTube page. And for more information on candidates, you can go to the League's online voters guide, vote411.org. Or you can contact Berks County Election Services, elections at countyofberks.com. Their phone number is 610-478-6490. And thank you for watching Candidates Upfront.